precisely cater to what to gay people, but would really welcome their presence, even if it if it was as just a, one more exotic drawing card to the tourists. Also, uh, some white people, white homosexuals, went to uh, to Harlem because, as, as one character says in, in an interesting novel that was written in the early thirties that talks about Harlem in the nineteen twenties, a novel.
also in the Claude McKay's Home to Harlem, who depicts a, a Harlem nightclub that's uh, black and white and straight and gay. And the, uh, uh, the black heterosexuals are not at all disturbed by the sexualness. They rather like it, but they are disturbed because they say uh, the Ophays will be nosing it out and we'll have to take a back seat soon. The white people will be coming in. And that, that they don't like. I think that, that in all of these novels, the relationship between um, straight and, uh, and gay people is friendly enough, although sometimes perhaps a little ambivalent. Um, some of the novels quote blues songs, for example, that seem to suggest some razzing on the part of, of, of heterosexuals. There's one that goes, um, there is two things in Harlem I don't understand. It is a bulldiking woman and a faggoty man. Oh, baby, how are you? Oh, baby. But it, it seems to me that that, that kind of um, open heterosexual ambivalence was uh, much healthier than the suppression of the subject that was characteristic uh, in later decades, such as the 1950s. It, it at least permitted discussion and examination, such as the kind that we saw between uh, Jake and Raymond. There's um, one more novel, uh, Strange Brother, that, that, that presents a mixed nightclub in that novel, uh, the white heterosexual character, June, says she wants to see the other Harlem. She's taken to a place called the Lobster Pot that was based on a, a place that actually existed in Harlem called the Clam House. We're told that the Lobster Pot is just vibrant with variety, both in color and sexual orientation. Uh, let me just read one description. Uh, we're told that three white women had just taken a table next to several Negro dandies one of the whites was a girl, rather lovely, with delicately chiseled features and short, dark hair, brushed severely back from the smooth, low forehead. From the waist up, she was dressed like a man, in a loose shirt of soft, white silk and a dark, tailored coat. She sat with one arm around the woman beside her. The, uh, the most prominent figure in this particular novel is uh, a woman by the name of Sybil, who is actually based a black uh, piano player in Harlem, a, a transvestite woman. Sybil in this novel has just a, a beautiful vitality. We're told that Sybil fills the room with her vast energy and performs as though to live was so gorgeous an experience that one must dance and sing in Thanksgiving. She seemed possessed by an excitement that she communicated to everyone in the room. And we learn that, that she lives with another woman learned that they were married in a ceremony in which she wore a tuxedo and the other woman wore a, a, a bridal veil and orange blossoms. And a, a white character says about them, they're happy and nobody they know thinks any the less of them. We're also told that they're saving money to, to adopt a child. So that certainly suggests a, a good deal of openness in, in this community. I've discovered that these nightclubs that are uh, depicted in the novels all Exclusive Club, which was actually owned by uh, Gladys Bentley, uh, Connie's Inn, The Yay Man, The Garden of Joy, and all of these were uh, black and white and straight and gay, uh, male and 